I think Patreon contacted Sargon, told him that they didn't like what he was doing, and Sargon doubled down on everything, never apologizing, and uh, they canned him for it. Um, do I think there's political motivations in it? Sure. Sure. They probably haven't contacted other Patreon people, uh, whatever the correct term is. They, they probably haven't contacted others to say, hey, we don't like your language either. Okay, so I'm sure there's some, there's some political stuff going on here. It's easy to dislike Sargon. Um, <clears throat> now, I guess for the other side, do you think it's easy to like Sargon because he, he pones so many snowflakes, right? So that's a reason to just love someone, right? Anyway, um, what I think is likely to come out of this is, you know, probably within a year from now, we'll probably see a number of people who were formerly known as anti-SJWs switching sides because they've realized it's no longer financially, uh, it's not no longer a financially viable uh, formula to do all the anti-SJW stuff. Because what I think happened... I, I just recently found out that Patreon got its start in 2013. Well, that makes perfect sense as to how the, the whole rise of the anti-SJW side of things. Um, you know, why it became so prevalent after, you know, by the end of 2013. And that would, that would be a good explanation of why. You know, people realize, hey, we can make a, a shit ton of money by, by saying these kinds of things. Great. Um, and when they see that they can't make money from that sort of thing anymore, I think some people will switch sides. Some. Some will just kind of drop out. Because, um, you know, that's what this is all about. It's about, about, about making money. If people weren't able to make money saying these things, they, they probably won't say them. Which means, which kind of shows how disingenuous some people are kind of being about this. It's just, it's just, a, it's just a method of making money for some people. So, anyway. <clears throat> 